iPad OS 26 redefines what an iPad can do. I'm here in Cupertino, Apple Park, because I just attended to Apple's WWDC and got the incredible opportunity to give you an early hands-on look on iPad OS 26. By the end of the video, you'll discover tons of features that Apple didn't talk about that are incredibly powerful. Let's talk about the windowing experience that basically brings everything that you love and know about the Mac to the iPad. The iPad now finally allows you to resize and place app windows freely in your screen. You can move screen windows even off screen, just like on the Mac. Your iPad will even remember window positions and sizes for the next time you open the app. Once again, just like on the Mac. Expose also now shows all open windows visually and in a clean way that is very easy to switch. You can also tile windows by just a flick with this gesture right here. And for the first time, full external display support is now on the iPad, which means you're going to have a very desktop-like experience. By the opportunity that I had testing it out, I can honestly say it works extremely well. We also get the menu bar on all apps. So just like on the Mac, on the top left, you're gonna have the file, the window, even the search. Now the iPad OS now has all of that and most apps already support it. So inside of Final Cut Pro, inside of Affinity Designer, inside of Pro App, for example, this is going to be incredibly useful. We also now get a new cursor on the iPad. We've always had this circle on the cursor on the iPad, which didn't honestly make a lot of sense. But Apple has grabbed the typical cursor that we all know and love about the Mac and on standard laptops and has brought it inside of iPad OS. We also have the traffic light buttons or as Apple calls it, the window control. Those red, yellow and green buttons that we all know and love once again on the Mac are now on the iPad. So you can close, hide or full screen an app just by a tap. Now, if this wasn't enough, Apple has also added background tasks to the iPad. This can be useful in a bunch of different ways. Let's say you're in Final Cut Pro and you're exporting a video and you wanna just swipe up and go to Safari, for example, your video will keep exporting as a background task. It will show up in this animation in the top of your screen. Or maybe you're sending an airdrop or you're downloading some footage from the web. It will all act as a background task and it will work. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Apple. More Mac-like features that are coming to the iPad is that we now have a dedicated preview app on the iPad. So there's now finally a proper way on how to open a PDF apart from just opening it inside of the Files app. We have a dedicated preview app so you can add signatures right onto preview. Now, obviously your iPad is going to feel very differently with iPadOS 26 because Apple has redesigned the entire software with a new design that's called Liquid Glass. Now, Liquid Glass basically adds depth and life to icons, app UIs, control center, lock screen, buttons, everything has this liquid glass kind of texture. And in my opinion, looks absolutely gorgeous. In the home screen, we can either add our app icons to go color or in dark mode, or now we now have a new clear transparent option, which everything will be very, very clear and translucent, which in my opinion, just looks so gorgeous once again. And this will make all of your app icons and widgets go clear. The Files app has also gotten tons of improvements, which is something that the iPad desperately needed. We have a bunch of stuff, starting off with resizable columns. So just by selecting it and moving left and right, you'll be able to resize them. Once again, just like on the Mac. We have collapsible folders, custom folder icons and colors, which is also a brand new feature inside of Mac OS 26. You can customize the way that your folders look, which is a lot of fun. Something big as well that's coming to the iPad is that you can drag folders to your iPad's dock. So if you use a specific folder a lot, or maybe it's the downloads folder, you can add it directly to the dock of your iPad, which is a feature that the iPad once again desperately, desperately needed. There's also now a specific toggle when you open a file. If you right click it, you can now open with. So if you want a specific raw image that you took on your camera to not open up in preview and you want it to always open in Lightroom, you can now decide where you want those files to open. Apple has also done something big in terms of audio, allowing us to choose our input control. This is a big game changer for someone like me that I personally have a podcast. I can finally connect the microphone to my iPad and select the source that that audio is coming from, from a microphone, from an audio interface. We also have local capture, which allows you to record clean, isolated audio and a video from a conference, from a meeting, or obviously from a podcast. And that's the way that I'm personally going to be using it. And it even has echo cancellation. So there's finally a way to record podcasts that actually makes sense on iPad 
Apple has made this so easy to record podcasts now, which I'm just so happy about. Apart from preview, we also have a brand new app to the iPad and that is the journal app. The journal app is an incredible app on the iPhone that basically lets you journal your thoughts, your memories right on your iPhone. But Apple has finally brought that to the iPad, allowing you to add handwritten notes photos, audio, you can track your mood, you can add a location. So I actually said in a podcast, I will start journaling once the journal app is available on the app. So I guess I'm gonna start journaling now now that the journal app is finally available on the iPad. Another app has also been released, which is the phone app. Yes, the phone app that we all know and love from the iPhone is now available on the iPad. So it's basically technically the replacement for the FaceTime app. We also have the FaceTime app on the iPhone, but I personally never use the FaceTime app. Whenever I wanna FaceTime somebody, I just do it directly on the phone app. It also supports the new feature called Hold Assist and call screening, which is also built into the iPad. We also have Apple Games, which is basically the new home for all of your gaming on iPad. It's the central hub and home for all of your games. So all of your games will live in there. You'll be able to see live events, friend invites, adjust settings. You can even chat and call in game. And there's obviously so much more to cover about iPad OS. Hit subscribe because very soon I'm going to be uploading over a hundred new features inside of iPad OS that I obviously didn't talk about in this video. If you want to see everything that's new in iOS 26 or watch OS 26, you can tap on these videos. Hit subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you in the next one from Cupertino, California. Peace.